Good evening students. After two days holidays, I am meeting you through video classes. I am Naha Jodi, your English teacher. I am fine. Hope you are also fine. You have successfully finished your first midterm test. A fine applause for that. You are all smart and obedient students. Keep doing. I have insisted presentation is very 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 important. Many students followed that in your test papers. Very good. But few students still did not change your way of writing. Follow what we say. That will be helpful for you in your public exam. Now we shall start our 7th unit of English class. The Dying Detective which was written by author Canon Dial. Before going to the lesson we can see about the author shall we dear students now take page number 193 in your english book let's see about the author sir author ignatius conan dial was a british writer best known for his detective fiction featuring the character of sherlock holmes which are generally considered milestones in the field of crime fiction dial wrote Forty-six short stories featuring the famous detective. The story is narrated by the character Doctor Watson. Originally a physician, in 1887 he published *A Study in Scarlet*, the first of four novels about Holmes and Doctor Watson. In addition, Dial wrote over fifty short stories. featuring the famous detective the sherlock holmes stories are generally considered milestones in the field of fiction his notable works include stories of sherlock holmes on the lost world sir author canon dial was inspired by his lecturer in medicine joseph bell you can see him in page number 192 Joseph Bell was a lecturer in medicine whose detective approach to diagnosis inspired him very much and he created the character Sherlock Holmes he created Sherlock Holmes and wrote more than 50 crime stories which are milestones in the field of crime fiction can you understand now shall we go to the lesson now we can see the lesson take page number 189 the detective sherlock holmes was seriously ill he wanted to meet his assistant watson he asked his landlady to get him watson was surprised to see the condition of his master was watson able to save his master read on to know more about the underlying story behind holmes's sickness Now shall we move to the lesson dear students we'll begin the prose i have underlined few words and sentences you can also do the same in your textbook page number 189 mrs hudson the land lady of sherlock holmes came to me and said mr holmes is dying mr watson for 3 days he has been sinking and i doubt if he will last another day he would not let me get a doctor i told him i could not stand it any more and would get a doctor he replied let it be watson then the story begins with mrs hudson she was the landlady here means house owner for sherlock holmes she went to dr watson and informed that mr holmes was dying sherlock holmes was bedridden and became very sick he did not want the landlady to get a doctor to cure him he prevented her from doing so but holmes allowed the landlady to call his assistant watson so she went to watson and explained the situation of sherlock holmes can you understand coming to the second para I was horrified for I had not heard about his illness before. 
I rushed for my hat and coat. As we drove back, I asked her about the details. Coming to the third para, there is little I can tell you, sir. He has been working on a case down at Rodahit near the river and has brought this illness back with him. He took to bed on Wednesday afternoon and has never moved since. For three days, neither food nor drink has passed his lips. Why did you not call a doctor? He wouldn't have it, sir. I did not dare to disobey him. When Dr. Watson heard this, he hurried towards his master's house. While travelling, he inquired the landlady about Sherlock Holmes' health. Mrs. Watson explained the things happened. He went for a case at Radhahit near the river and came back sick. Wednesday afternoon, he fell sick from that day till now. He never moved from his sick bed. For three days, he did not have any food or drinks. So now Watson raised the question, why Mrs. Hudson didn't call a doctor? She immediately replied that Holmes did not allow her to call the doctor. She also added that she was not dare enough to disobey his words. Is it clear? He was indeed a sad sight. In the dim light of a foggy November day, the sick room was a gloomy spot. But it was the gaunt face staring from the bed that brought chill to my heart. His eyes had the brightness of fever. His cheeks were flushed. And his hand twitched all the time. He lay listless. My dear fellow, I cried, approaching him. Stand back, stand right back, he cried. When Mrs. Hudson and Watson entered Sherlock Holmes' room, he was surprised at the sight of him. In the dim light, the room seemed too gloomy as it was the month of November. He looked abnormally weak, had feverish looking eyes, and gaunt face, that is lean face. His eyes had the brightness of fever, his cheeks were flushed, and his hand trembled all the time. Can you understand the situation of Sherlock Holmes? Dr. Watson advanced to examine symptoms, but was stopped midway by the stern warning from Holmes not to approach him. Is it clear? But why? I want to help you. I said, certainly, Watson, but it's for your own sake. For my sake, I was surprised. I know what is the matter with me. It is the disease from Sumatra. It is deadly and contagious, Watson. That's it. By touch. Good heavens, Holmes, do you think this can stop me? I said, advancing towards him. Watson replied that he wanted to help Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes answered that he could understand his feelings, but he wanted him to maintain distance, which was better for Watson's sake. What was for my sake? asked Watson. Sherlock Holmes cautioned Watson to stay away from him as he was suffering from some contagious disease that he had picked up from Rotherhead. What is contagious disease? Contagious means moving easily from one person to another. For example, now we can say Corona. The disease he got from Sumatra was deadly and could spread even with the touch. Can you understand? If you will stand there, I will talk. If you don't, you must leave the room, said my master. I have always given in to Holmes's wishes. But now my feelings as a doctor were aroused. I was at least his master in the sick room. Holmes, I said, you are not yourself. Whether you like it or not, I will examine your symptoms and treat you. Dr. Watson raised the question that his words could not stop him from examining Sherlock Holmes. But Sherlock Holmes spoke in a hoarse voice and stop. Dr. Watson from examining him or he could leave that room immediately. 
Dr. Watson always heard Sherlock Holmes's words, but as a doctor, he felt bad and he wanted to be a master at that time of his sick bed and treat him. Watson insisted that he would examine the symptoms and he wanted to give treatment for Sherlock Holmes.